is there such a thing as an ideal target AFR for an engine? And if it is, what the heck is it? Well, the answer, of course, is way more complicated than something that simple. So let's talk about all the details today. There's a lot of them. Now, I'm in here, I'm gonna show you some different AFR settings. We're gonna change some things uh, on this one, probably more along the lines at idle. We may make some jet changes to change the uh, different circuits in here a little bit so you can see what happens when you run a carburetor either too rich or too lean, and we can see that on the AFR. So I'll show that to you here in a minute, but first there's a couple of things we need to talk about. So when we talk about carbureted AFR, what we're really talking about is what the fuel air mixture is that gets into the engine and is consumed during the combustion process and spit out the exhaust. We're talking about what that ratio, chemical ratio is that's being burned through the engine. When you take away fuel, it's a leaner AFR number. When you add more fuel, it's a richer AFR number. Well, what does all that mean? Why is all that important? Why does it make a difference when tuning a carburetor as long as it drives right, starts, stops, drives, cruises, whatever? Well, it makes a lot of difference when you're trying to tune this for a specific reason or application. I really dislike that term target AFR because it's a carburetor. For one, there's only a limited number of circuits. There's only a limited number of ways you can tune that. And there's endless combinations of engines, drivability, transmissions, components, all of those things factor into play. And you can't make an empirical statement that 13.5 is your target AFR. Okay, for what situation? So that's where you draw into a lot of problems. And you now I get plenty of comments. Uh, I think the last video I did on setting AFR uh, got probably the most, but every time we talk about AFR, it's the same thing. You get people saying, no, that's too rich, that's too lean, you should be here, you should be there, when in reality, they don't have any clue. And when I say they don't have any clue, what do I mean? It's not that they're ignorant, and that's not a bad word. You've got to got to look at the language. You can be either ignorant or you can be stupid. Ignorant is not knowing. If you told me today I had to go down to Kohl's or wherever to buy a, a dress or jeans or whatever for my wife, I am 100% ignorant in what needs to happen to make sure she gets the right size. Totally ignorant, it's not a bad thing. Now, if she tells me here's exactly what I want, go get it and I buy something different, that makes me stupid. So in most instances for me, at least here on the GMC truck, when we get into tuning the Chevelle, my definition of target AFR, or best AFR, is mine. Get the most power and torque while providing the engine proper fueling to protect short and long-term service life, dependability. It needs to survive, it needs to live. I don't wanna run it so rich that we're washing down cylinders, that we're diluting oil, that we're ruining the internals of the engine just because I think it's gonna give us more power. Actually adding too much fuel takes away power. But your definition of it may be slightly different or totally different. If you're tuning for fuel economy and you want the best economy out of an application, the components are gonna change, the hardware is gonna change, the cam profile, intake, how it's all set up, and then how you tune the carburetor is completely gonna change and be different from how I tune or how a carburetor's tuned for something that's more of a performance application. So in reality, you have to set the standards for what your target AFR is based on what you're trying to do with it. So what are some of the factors at play here? Well, is it carburetor or is EFI? Both have different limits on either end of the scale, rich or lean, of where you need to tune for and how you set the tables up on an EFI and where you try to set the circuits on a carburetor application. Lean is gonna to look totally different on a EFI setup than it does on a carburetor setup. Is the engine stock? Is it slightly modified? Is it highly modified? Is it raced? You know, is it boosted? What type of fuel are you using? Automatic or manual transmission? All of those things come into play when you're trying to set a target AFR for the circuit that you're working on. Idle may look totally different than cruise 
or wide open throttle. Or if you don't really care about cruise because it's a drag race car, uh, those circuits really are just, hey, does it run? Is it getting enough fuel not to kill anything or hurt anything? Great, then we'll set it where we set it. The other side of that is making bad decisions in an application will certainly come back to haunt you. It does every single time, no matter what you're doing. And I see that over and over again. Guy's got a lifted four-wheel drive truck, and he's got a bone stock rotating assembly, compression ratio 305 in it, but he put an air gap RPM <laughs> intake on it, performer RPM intake on it, and yeah, put a 650 on it or a 750 and thinks it's gonna tune right. It's not going to. So obviously the combination of parts is a big one and you've gotta make a little bit of assumption here that you've gotten the right combination of parts before you start all this process. Honestly, the biggest thing that I look at in this when I am tuning a carburetor for an application is you've gotta understand that more fuel in the cylinder is not always best. Not enough fuel in the cylinder is certainly can be an issue as well too. Too much fuel, you can lose a lot of power, quite a bit actually. Power curve will start to drop off pretty dramatically. Adding too much fuel tends to plateau out and it just doesn't make any difference. Now, here's the big situation in it. Adding fuel to an engine certainly helps with the temperature and allowing it to transfer heat out of the engine into the exhaust and out of the engine. That's a big factor when we're talking about how we tune for things is that thermal factor in what's the fuel designed to do in cooling an engine. So the richer the fuel air mixture, the cooler the engine's gonna run internally. The leaner, the hotter. Won't be able to carry the heat out of the engine. There's not enough fuel to do that. Think of it in really simple terms. If you are putting a fixed amount or a amount of air into a cylinder as it's being drawn in there and atmospheric pressure is allowing it to flow into the cylinder head or into the combustion chamber, but you're not adding enough fuel, that fuel doesn't spread completely through the chamber and it causes conditions that don't quite burn properly. Hot spots, detonation, loss of power, there's plenty of things that that condition can cause. And certainly on a performance application, where you're tuning for power, you don't want any of those things to occur. And if you're also in, you remember back to my definition just a minute ago, I'm also looking for long-term and short-term survivability of the engine. It's not a drag race engine where I'm racing, you know, five, six, seven seconds at a time. I'm looking to drive down the road, cruise. And so for me, being a little fatter in some circuits is completely acceptable. I'll put up on the screen here a little bit of info as far as how I view AFR and uh, you know what uh, what situations you can be into with the numbers that you get. But here's how I view those: that nine AFR of nine and lower is you're not gaining anything. You're literally washing down the cylinders. You're diluting the oil. Uh, you're certainly not getting the same. Uh, sealing power on the rings if you're washing away all the oil and, and the things that are there to help seal that up. It's just not necessary. And, and again, you're not making a lot of power with that. So getting the tuning right and getting it down closer to what you're actually, the engine's actually going to use, well, it's pretty important. Now that 15.5 for me is my max AFR that I want to be at on this engine for cruise. If it's closer to 15, I'm happy, but 15.5 is the absolute reach. If I see myself getting into, or the engine getting into 16 to one, uh, it may be okay for you on an engine that you're working on, and it's maybe okay if this was a stock application that I was looking to tune for more fuel economy, more maybe emissions control, if, if that's important to me, but for me, eh, I will never tune outside of that. When we get into the Chevelle, uh, that will be a much more aggressive engine, probably close to 800 horsepower uh, at the crank. Um, we'll certainly run a much larger carburetor. I don't really care too much about a lean cruise condition. I will probably try to keep that down closer to 14 on the cruise and probably even richer than that and go 13.5. But what does that look like? What does that have effect? 
Remember we talked about the thermal properties here and what fuel does to remove heat from an engine. That's what we're gonna show here in just a second. So let me get this fired up. We'll start tuning this and we're gonna do this in two different forms. Initially, we're going to, I'll adjust the idle mixture. I'm going to adjust it to rich and probably be, I'll probably try to target 12 and a half at idle, which I would agree on this engine is too much. But I want you to see what that looks like as we run it and what happens when we shut the engine off. The second side of that is we're going to adjust the idle mixture and I'm going to adjust it to lean. I'm going to probably put it closer to, you know, four, let's go, let's target 14.7. Let's try to get it at that stoichiometric or stoic and try to get it at that target range and see what happens at idle. And we'll take a look at that and see what happens after the engine shut off. Okay, we're pretty close to that uh, target AFR. Let me try to take a little bit more fuel out of there. And drop that down just a hair. Yeah, close enough. It's fat. It is definitely idling fat. So for staying pretty steady though. All right, close enough. So I'm gonna go drive this thing for a little while. I gotta go run an errand anyway, so I'm gonna go drive that, take that down the road, uh, and then uh, yeah, we'll. Uh, come back or we'll shut it off when we get there and uh, let it soak while I run in run an errand and we'll see what it looks like when we come back out. Well, we're about three quarters of a point leaner. So that should drop down here as it uh, kind of cools off a little bit. But that tells you that when an engine's hot, it's gonna lean out the fuel air mixture a little bit and that's the situation that it's in. I mean, it's a normal driving condition here. We're just made a little run, get to do, do some things, shut it off, let it sit for, I don't know, seven, 10 minutes, something like that, and uh, fire it up and see what happens. So yeah. It's uh, not un not out of the ordinary, that's for sure. So let's take that the other way. Let's go back under hood and let's set this really lean on the mixture and see what happens, same condition. All right, we're not bouncing around too much. That's close enough. RPM changed quite a bit as I was uh, leaning it out too, so. All right. We are idling around that probably average, that 14.7 ish. Uh, we'll call it that. Now, let's go drive it and uh, shut it off, let heat soak, and we'll check it again. Old Shane from Slant Daily Garage here today. If you're not, uh, not following his channel, you need to. He's a pretty brilliant little engineer and pretty good dude. This guy's at the Edelbrock Car Show, I think, quite a bit. 
seen the car before. Pretty sure it's been here. But six and seven, that's my year. If I'm gonna own a Ford, it's gonna be this car right here. Well, maybe not his, but that is exactly what I would own. Man, I love those. Just look good. <laughs> <laughs> so he, that's what happens. Remember, we were at 14, 7, 14, 8, somewhere in there bouncing around. Look how lean that got after sitting for eh, maybe 20 minutes or so. And it really heat soaked the engine, carburetor, fuel system. That's what it does. So setting it at 14.0 or 14.7, sorry, if you're going to try to get it at stoic it is not going to stay there all the time you we are in a horrible horribly lean condition right now now it'll start to clear itself out here as uh cooler starts running through the engine and it'll get itself back down there eventually especially if we start driving get some airflow going underneath that hood but that is way too lean that is the perfect example of why you shouldn't set your idle mixture on a performance engine at least in this application at 14.7 that's why I always set it at 13.5 this reason exact here because I drive it I drive it quite a bit I drive it I stop I'm in some place for 10 minutes 20 minutes something like that come back out and I don't want it running that lean period end of story it's not good for the thermal side of the engine and pulling the heat out of the engine and getting it booted out the exhaust, getting it through the cooling system, whatever the case may be. We're already starting to creep back up a little bit. We were at 16, that was a 16.1 or 16.2 before I got the camera fired up. It's already dropping down a little bit, but camera's been on now for well, a minute and a half, minute and 45 seconds. So again, that's the reason why. You're, it's not a dynamic situation where it's an EFI system where if it you're commanding it to idle at 14.7, it will typically always idle at 14.7 because at this point it would dump a little bit more fuel to get to that point and then monitor it by the O2 and shift around. So good example of uh, why we shouldn't do that. And that's what it all boils down to. Is 13.5 too rich at idle? Absolutely not. It's perfect. It's perfect for a driver, it's perfect for a cruiser, it's perfect in most every situation. Now again, like I mentioned at the beginning of this, you have to determine what your target AFR is for the scenario that you're putting the carburetor into. If this was an EFI setup, it's totally different. But for a carburetor, because it's analog, because it requires your input, it has no way of making any changes on its own, you have to decide where you want it. You have to decide what the best solution is for it and what the best situation is for it. And in this case, at idle, mm, we want a little bit more fuel. If you lean it out, you get exactly what we just saw. Really, really lean and not a good situation. I hope that shed a little bit of light on it. If you got any questions on this one, leave them down below. I'd be happy to answer them. Certainly if you're in that situation on your own, it's the ultimate cheat code. It gives you the opportunity to figure out exactly what the carburetor is giving the engine and exactly what the results are. Greatest tool ever, for sure. But I get it, some people can't afford to do it, but again, if you're gonna err on the side of anything, err on the side of being a little too fat. So drop those questions down below, give it a like if you dug the video, and uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys on the next one. We'll see ya.